Hey, moin moin. So I'm doing a small series around robotic foundational models and starting with by zero uh, from physical intelligence. The, the idea is also to go to Germany Robotics and, and the crew. I mean, a lot happened in, in one year, especially in robotics. We started with by zero and now we have systems like Germany Robotics with Google ER and the action model, along with like pretty fancy uh, synthetic data pipelines from from group that they use in the group system so yeah let's start with the by zero model let's look at the architecture so when you talk about the robotic action models like most of these models they start with the vlm and it makes sense because vlms already have the semantic understanding of the language of, of the vision which is kind of necessary in the robotic world too because the, the current models they pass the language commands when you when you ask it to make yourself a sandwich or fetch you a cup of water it kind of have to understand what you're talking about so starting from a pre-trained vlm makes sense i can imagine that in the future or very soon we would see uh, world models uh, trained on physics simulator or maybe trained even on the real robots being used as the as the backbone which are then fine-tuned with the with the action side in the robotics so what Pizero team did was they took a pre-existing pre action model, uh, Pali Gamma, and they extended it by adding a different action model to it called Action Expert, making it into a vision language action model. It pretty a lightweight model, it's just 3.3 billion parameters, pre-trained VLM being 3 billion and action, action Expert being like 300 million, something around that. Now, what's interesting is like they took inspiration from transfusion, which is that they don't consider it as two different models, but it is a single giant unified transformer. Not giant, uh, but single unified transformer. However, it's trained with different objectives. So when they're fine-tuning, the more action expert, they start with independent weights. Um, and when they're when they're fine-tuning or training the whole model, they use different loss functions. For pre-train, I think they stick to the cross entropy. And for action expert, they use something called flow matching. How they go more into the flow matching part? I think that is one of the most exciting part of this paper, at least for me. Yeah. Now I like this this slide or this image from 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 physical intelligence, their main block. It's it kind of compress it kind of has everything around it. So let's let's talk about so the model are divided such that the VLM backbone takes the images and the language. Basically, you can have three images or you can have multiple images. Now, the way they tackle it for different robotic embodied embod lock out the slots. So the images go through VIT, I think, for embedding the, the tokens, uh, for embedding the images and getting the tokens, and the language goes through the standard tokenizer. Uh, and the action and the robotic state, basically the angles of motors, the joint angles of the motors, they go through the action experts. Uh, they, they don't go to the VLM, they, they're directly sent to the action expert. Here again, depending on the dimensions of the robotics, like basically it has six motors or like six, six degrees of freedom or it has like more or not, uh, the action values and the state values are zero padded. Um, yeah. So like I said, it has like some of this mixture of expert analogy where if you have images and language which is directed, routed to a different model, that is the VLM backbone. And if you have the robotic state and the actions, it is then routed to the action expert. Um, I say action is routed because they always start with like not, they, they have a noisy action, which is used for training, but then they use like absolute noise to do the inference. We'll go into that soon enough. But let's talk about quickly about the data set. So I think the two main data sets that they talk about not counting the Ethernet scale pre-training of the VLM is the is their own data set, which is the cross environment. I think they have like seven different embodiments of robots and 68 different tasks that they use. Um, which makes like around 10,000 plus hours of data, which is a huge data when you think about robotics, because you have to manually collect those data sets. And they also use the OpenX data set, which is collaboration from different universities and labs all over the world, which has I think 22 different robots, if I maybe, I've, yeah, something like that. 
a lot of different tasks around it. So they talk about like pre-training and post-training data set. So they use the pre-training data set, which is something like this 10,000 hours of data set on seven different robotics, seven different robot embodiments and 50 tasks, which is a, a crude data set. So there are instances in this data set where the robot fails, where it is not clean, like where, where the operator is making some mistakes and then they recover. And they talk about like this data set being very important in, in pre-training because it helps robot understand the recovery part. And then they talk about the post-training data set, which is a high, very, very high quality data set trained for that task only and trained for that robot embodiment only. And they talk about that data set playing a role of teaching the robot to do the task efficiently. So both data sets play the role. Pre-trained being the general data set to give the general capability to the robot to let it understand the recovery part related just generalized to different aspects of training of the task. And then the post-training data set as to how to perform that task very efficiently. That's that's one part of it. It's pretty funny because they talk about the fold shirt as the command here is that their data set is, is skewed a bit towards uh, folding. So they do data set weighing, that is they, they they weigh down the data set which are more represented and which are overly presented or they add a thing ways to the data set which are underrepresented. I find it just funny that uh, they have laundry folding as over representation and someone was like separate into folding the laundries. Um, but it, it makes sense. Like I don't like sorting Legos, but I'm super into sorting Legos when I'm training the robot. Um, so let's look at look at how the how the observations and actions and everything look like for that if you have worked with the robot framework from hugging face you it, this might make more sense to you i just want to show how it looks like so the the observations that go into the into the vlm they're basically images images one image two it could be image three image four depending upon how many images they have in in our case in my case i'm using just two images and then they have the language command uh, going with it and also you also have the robot state, state space which makes which is part of the observation but not not something that goes to the vlm and action command to the robot is i mean so in this case the robot has six joints so it is it has six values six motor values so this is how the action command looks like that's basically the, the angles for the encoders for the motor this is our the states for those robots and the language instruction instruction in this case was to grab the labor block and this is exactly how the observations look like for the pi zero the, the difference is that they don't have a single action command for a single time step, but they use so something I forgot is that when they're generating actions, they don't generate single action. They generate action with 50, with the 50 hertz frequency. Basically, they're generating 50 action uh, steps. And that's pretty neat trick because it not only kind of makes up for the latency, but it is quite useful in the long horizon task where you need like smooth robotic movements. Uh, uh, so this is how something it would look like. Uh, so you have um, basically just 50 by six. In my case, once again, I think in Y0, they use uh, 18 dimensions for the actions, which are once again, like zero padded. And I wanted to go into the flow matching part, which is one of the exciting parts in the exciting parts of the paper, like how they train the language expert. Now, if you, know, if you have seen the old diffusion models, you might not, Old. The, the diffusion models like stability on stability 1.5 or things like that you see like you always have to do, you always give like the number of iterations like how many steps this should take to go from the noisy beginning to have like a completely to have like an end image that that we're generating this is kind of the same understanding that's happening here so here you're starting with like a noisy action vector and then over you're taking like in, in by zero paper, you're taking 10 steps to generate the action vector, the final action vector. Now let's look at training a bit and then also how they do the inference. So when they're training, so I have like, like, like I said, it's a dummy code just to give you an understanding. So I'm taking action dimensions of six because of my robot here only has six actions. Uh, edge being 50 is the, is the horizon steps, like how many, action commands do you want 
eight to generate. And in the paper, they use they use H as in 50. Number of integration steps, like how many steps do you want to iterate over the noise to get the final action? And delta is basically how many steps, what like the difference between each, each step. Now, this is like also a very interesting part. Now, when they start training, so like I said, you, when you're doing the inference, you start with a completely noisy vector for the action, and then you go step by step into generating a final action output. Similar to image, you, you saw you started with a noisy image and then you step by step. So when training, you have to train the model to understand to how how you should how it look at the noisy how does how do the noisy actions look like and then you also need the the model also need to see the noise at different levels because it is iterating right um so you can argue that you can do a uniform distribution of how noisy the ground truth actions should be but the problem with the uniform distribution is that your model won't be trained for highly noisy action scenarios that are kind of important in the robotic in the robotic domain. So they use the beta distribution where alpha being 1.5, that is beta A, and beta being 1 as the, as the distribution parameters. And they use the scaling, and they also reduce the scaling to 0.999 instead of 1. Now, the reason that the Pi0 team mentions in the paper is that if you have the scaling to 1, what could happen or what happens uh, in the experiment was the the action expert learns just the identity function which is exactly giving the same output as the input uh, in this case and they want to avoid that which leads to 0.999 scaling of the of the DAO of the noise level now this part here is it's the placeholder function this is where your action expert will live and it will output the uh, it will output that with the action chunk or the the ground root vector for how in which direction your noise should move to get uh, the other actions to get the main robotic actions now sampling noise is pretty important and this is what they mentioned in the paper like you're using a beta distribution because you want the noise so when you when you're sampling the noise you want the distribution to be skewed towards zero so you have more training on the noisy data compared to training on on like less noisy data and the way they, they use the beta distribution and then the beta distribution is automatically biased towards one and then they subtract it from one basically flipping it to be biased towards zero and then scale it by the scaling factor as we discussed so you never have like the absolute identity factor so for now he in this case i'm generating we are in this case the this is how you would generate the uh, you generate the noisy ground truth action and the target vector for training one thing i meant forgot was when you have the action expert as the input it takes the noisy action at that virtual time step the level of the noise and the input context input observational context which is coming from the vlm So we are sampling the tau here. Uh, we just discussed it, like how we how we sample the tau to be more biased towards being noisy at the same time, scaling it by 0.999, not to accidentally make them on the identity function. We are getting the generating the noisy action basically for 50 time steps, uh, 50 frequency, and even the action dimension. Then you are converting your true actions like this is your ground truth action to the policy action depending on the value of your tau at that particular time step and then you're generating the target vector field this is what your model wants to learn this is the ground truth for your model that basically in which direction should your action vector move towards to in higher dimension to come closer to the real action values now when I say like to which direction should your action vector move in the high dimension, I think it becomes like very confusing for people to think about it. Is that you have you have a noisy vector for our case, let's let's say six dimensions, and you have to move each value in its own dimension. I mean, the reason we're doing it once again with the flow matching and 
and using the flow matching and all something like cross entropy because this is the continuous distribution if you want to move a robot to a particular position you have it's it's a multimodal problem you have different ways of there is not one absolute value of motors that can do it there are like a lot of ways of getting to that particular position and this is this is the whole motivation behind using flow matching to solve this multimodality action problem in the robotics now i was thinking like i was saying if you're thinking about the dimensions like i find it the the end scene in interstellar where 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 matthew mcconaughey is stuck in the tesseract and he's moving around the shelves like the bookshelves to basically manipulate the time and to see which time instance is going around i find it like for visualization purposes, it's interesting it, like to use that as the reference to see like how you are pushing around the values to get the end action vector or to get the end image, like whatever your problem at that point is. So yeah, so we're generating the, the noisy action, we're generating the target vector field, we're generating the tau, and then you are basically passing it on to, I mean, doing, this, is the, this is how you, this is doing training. You pass it on to your action expert and calculate the calculate the mean square error and then you do the back propagation with, with that error like you can see and then like later so, yeah so you calculate the mean square error and you can do the back propagation with that basically how this is how you will train your algorithm to learn the dynamics for getting to the target vector field and what happens with the inference time is that you start with power being completely zero that is you start with absolute noise uh, and then you iterate over it for, in our case, in pi zero scales, like 10 time steps. So you, you pass that value, the current action at tau. And now your model is trained to, your model is trained to look at the current action at that particular noise level, understand the level of the noise, understand the observation context, and then give you a predicted vector field that is basically the magnetic direction that your current action vector should move into to get a better action value, to get the right action vector for the robotics, for your, for your robot. Now we apply the Euler step to do that. You update your delta and you basically continue that for 10 integrations. At end of which you should have your, you should have the action vectors for your robot. To, yeah, with, with the 50 time steps in, in this case. Hope I was able to explain it. Um, I would make the block available and you could also have the codes. Maybe you can just go through it yourself. And if I can think of a better way to explain it, I would maybe do a different video. If not, then you again in Gemini Robotics breakdown. Thank you.